Hello, hello, Dale Majors here, and welcome to day 11 of our masterclass. And today we're diving into habits. So I want to go back a little bit. Last, for, so our homework from last time was to go through the motivation gap. And before that, we closed out the habits. And one tip that I forgot to tell you that I want to add when, when dealing with specifics is I want to share an app that I've really enjoyed using that when I was establishing some of those habits and tracking some of those measures, some of those specifics, I, this really helped me. And the app is called Streaks. It's an iPhone app. Uh, I believe, man, it might be like $1.99. I'll put a link to it in the description, but it was really helpful. Any app that you can use to just track what you're doing. And one of the things that I like best, and this is going to, to speak to some of this habit stuff that we're going to talk about in, in today's video and over the next couple days, is the app at the very beginning, and I don't think it's as good as it used to be um, when, it had, when it only had six. It only had six things you could choose to set new habits with. Now you have 12. But what was so great about six, you had to be really mindful because a lot of times we'll get pumped up and we're going to want to change everything at once. And I just want to tell you that unless you're a superhero, um, which you may be, um, it's going to be really hard to change all of your stuff all at once. And you want to be patient with readjusting and tweaking and reshaping your life. And I'm going to share a few things over the next few days that will help you do that. So by the end of these habit videos, I want you to have the confidence, and I'm confident that you'll have the confidence and belief in yourself that you can actually start a habit, and we're going to choose a habit, and a month from now, two months from now, you're going to be doing something consistently that you had not been doing consistently before. That's exciting, right? And all on YouTube. So cool beans, and dang, I don't usually say cool beans, but there you go. Cool beans. It's cool. Let's jump into habits. Okay, so I've talked about this before. In 2014, I go on this bike trip, and what I didn't say is several months before, I read a book called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. I read it, it was interesting, it was entertaining, and I didn't really understand all that much of it. I didn't change much the first time I read it. So I read it again, and then while I was on this bike trip, paired with all that time that I had to think for myself, I thought, man, I would really like to be able to apply some of these habits into my life consistently. And the only way that I knew how to do that, I figured in the book they talk about keystone habits, and I figured that one way that would allow me to do that consistently, to start new habits, was to create a keystone habit of a morning routine, where I woke up early every single morning at 5 a.m. and did these things I, where, I, where I blocked out time for me that wasn't work time. No more work, no more office stuff. It was just me time for, you know, reading my scriptures and studying a language and writing in my journal and all these different things. And I want to share with you how that, how my whole routine changed over, a, over the last five years now. All right, so that's the change I made is I chose a keystone habit, which was waking up early, which means I had to go to bed early. And if you've got kids, it means you have to like feed them and bathe them early. So your waking up early starts like, um, uh, Waking up early starts at dinner time, basically, <laughs> because the day before, you have to be really thoughtful about doing everything on time so you can get to bed early, sleep enough, and wake up early. Anyways, waking up early. Little tangent. Um, let's talk about habits, and the, what I really want to focus on is how you cannot change all of them at once. So, and like I said, I told you that in 2014, I changed all my habits. In fact, it was over about a year period where I introduced writing in my journal every single day, where I introduced, uh, about four months later, I introduced a Duolingo where I started studying language every single day. My scriptures, I think, was right away when I was doing the journal as well, every single day. And over that next year or so, I had a workout habit. So workout, journal, scriptures, language, I even got a, you know, a couple minutes a day on the piano habit going that lasted two years, okay? Um, so, and all of these were things, I don't know if you've ever felt frustrated when you've gone into goal setting and you wrote down all these great ambitions and you 
took, you stuck with it for a couple days or a couple weeks, but then it all dropped off. That's how it works. So I really love actually in the book, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, he talks about the fat guy and the skinny guy. So how, how both of us, how, no, not how both of us, how both of them live in you. We all have the fat guy or the skinny guy or the fat lady and the skinny lady, right? Like we have that in us where we go, we get motivated and we're like, well, I'm going to wake up every day early at this. I'm going to practice my piano for an hour. I'm going to do all these things. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I'm so motivated. But then a week into it, two days into it, four weeks into it, you think, um, wow, I'm tired. Wow, that didn't work. And then you just stop. And that's your fat guy talking about it. So uh, not an amazing example. I made another video about the fat guy, skinny guy analogy that you can look up. I'll actually post it. I'll, I'll, I'll post the link to that in there. Um, and Michael Gerber actually commented on it. He's like the comment on it. I was so flattered. Um, thank you, Michael Gerber or Michael Gerber's social media assistant. Thank you. So I want to share with you an analogy about goal setting that um, has really served me well. And it's about, I call it the golden coins analogy, okay? So the idea is that we all have a fixed number of golden coins. And everything that we choose to do in our life costs some amount of golden coins. So if I decide that I want to wake up early and it's not a habit, because habits are a lot cheaper. It's when you do new things that are hard, okay? When I wake up early, that might cost two coins. If I go to the gym early, that might cost two coins. If I get chewed out at work and I have to deal with that, I might have to, give, I might have to spend a coin. And by the end of the day, if I started with eight coins, I've only got three coins left, and then I've got, a, um, I've got to you know, cook dinner or whatever else and, and, and do a yard project, all the coins are gone. So if you're then supposed to go and work on your business for two hours, you may not really have what it takes to get it going. Where if you work on developing and brainwashing yourself and developing a habit, let's not, it's probably not brainwashing, but developing that habit so it doesn't require coins to wake up early, you gain two coins in the morning because you just wake up early. If that habit to go to the gym becomes a habit and it's not hard, then you save two coins there. So by the time you get home from work and do the job and you know make dinner, you've still got four coins left to go and work on your business. So the idea is that when we do something habitually all the time, it becomes second nature and it's not hard anymore. If you wanna learn more about this, I recommend reading The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. But that's the idea. We can become, we can basically program ourselves to do these things and they no longer take effort. So I want you to think about something that you do every single day or every single week that other people might feel takes effort. For me, I go to church for two hours every Sunday. I also, what else do I do do habitually? You know, I play table tennis for 90 minutes twice a week. I you know, I write in my journal every single day. There's all these little things that used to be hard for me, but now they just happen habitually. So even if I'm at the end of the day with no willpower, it's very easy for me to still open up my journal and to jot some thoughts down. That's it. It's easy. So if you're, and what are, what are the golden coins? The golden coins are willpower. Okay. It's our willpower. So we can run out of willpower. And when we run out of willpower, then it's really hard to do hard things. And you may be able to do it temporarily, but long term, you're just going to break. So anything that takes willpower, you want to try to program so it doesn't take willpower. So anything hard that we do, that's it. So if you want to have a habit like going to the gym, then, then work on that habit until it takes fewer and fewer golden coins and eventually becomes nearly free before you can go work on other habits. So the idea there is if you have five new habits that you want to start, you only have eight golden coins and you don't have enough currency, you don't have enough to buy all those new habits at once. So if, if in the past you've always tried to start all of these new things at once and it hasn't worked, this could be the reason why is because you don't have enough willpower and you don't have enough, well, you don't have enough willpower to make it happen. So that's the idea. So one tip 
that I used is by starting really, really small. And one of the mindsets that I adopted was realizing that, and maybe this is negative, but I realized I'm pretty much the same dude now than I was two years ago. I still don't do this and this and this and this. And it's futile to keep trying to throw all of them in um, to my routine and failing. So I need to do something that I can guarantee that I'm going to do all the time, consistently. So that's why I said, I can, play, uh, I can play the piano every single day for at least one song. I can write in my journal even just a little bit every single day. I can do one lesson on Duolingo. And when I did that, some of those habits, they became more. The case in point, I wanted to start working out more, and instead of trying to be a bodybuilder and going to the gym for an hour a day, I didn't have that motivation or desire. I decided I'm going to do 25 push-ups and 50 sit-ups every single day. And I did that. And then a few months into it, I said, oh, I should start uh, rowing. I'll do three minutes on the rowing machine. And two years later, I do like a 10-minute, like an eight-minute, you know, little cardio run on top of the other things that I do, right? Um, where I'm doing my push-ups and sit-ups and burpees and squat jumps and handstands and whatever, right? A little morning routine workout that's a staple. And then, yeah, I might go on a run. I might go play pickleball for three hours. I might go play table tennis for 90 minutes. Those are other activities, but I have that as a baseline. So choose small things that you can actually do, but don't try to do them all at once. So pick one habit at a time and choose those things that you can do and realize that you only have so much that you only have so much willpower. All right, so that's the end of day 11, talking about habits. We're gonna continue talking about habits tomorrow um, on the next video. But your homework for today is to identify an area in your life where you wanna create a new habit, maybe two new habits, but not 10, right? And whatever you have enough willpower for, okay? And identify a habit that you're gonna start and then just start doing, start doing that thing. But I want you to identify that and, uh, and get started. So thanks for joining me, and I will see you on video 12, right? Are we on 12? Yes, we're on video 12 for the next video. And we're going to dig deeper into habits, and I'm going to share an avatar analogy with you that I think is really great that will help you further understand this uh, uh, habits in your life. So by the end, we're going to be great at, at keeping our own habits, and I'm just stoked for you um, and your journey. So thanks for being here, and I'll see you on the next video.